So hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Josephine Lara. I am a mental health educator at the at Cal State um, University Dominguez Hills. Um, I've been there for approximately 15 years now, I believe. Um, and I have been um, serving as a mental health educator for approximately eight years. So I've worked at the university in different capacities. Um, but I am very um, happy and honored to be here with you all today and to talk to us something about that I am very passionate about, which is mental health. Um, particularly, I'll be talking to you all about the mental health first aid training, um, which is something um, that I am an instructor of. And I'm hoping that by the end of today, maybe I could convince some of you all to get trained and so that you all can also become uh, mental health first aiders. So, um, give you a little bit of information about what is mental health first aid. So uh, mental health first aid is the initial help offered to a person um, developing a mental health or a substance use um, or a substance use problem or if they're experiencing a mental health crisis. And so this aid that is being given is very similar to like CPR. Um, so it's given until the appropriate um, professionals arrive or until the situation kind of resolves itself. And so um, you know, it's uh, one of those critical kind of moments when someone is experiencing a mental health crisis, we don't really want to leave them alone. And so the mental health first aid training, what it offers is it provides a step by step of really how to help and intervene a person that's experiencing a mental health crisis, or again, developing a mental health um, condition or a substance use problem. And so the um, what participants really gained out of this um, training is they, one, they learned um, to recognize some of the risk factors and warning signs of a mental health and substance use problems. Um, the information that we go over is on depression, anxiety, trauma, suicide, psychosis, and substance use. And so it is a very lengthy, um, uh, lengthy training, um, but you gain so much out of it. And so while in the training, you learn this step-by-step -step action plan, which is called LG, and I'll go more into details in a, in a second. Um, but this action plan, what is really meant to do is provide like a guidance of really how to help someone. And apart from um, this training, um, providing all these um, information is that you can apply it um, while in the training. So um, as an instructor, we provide scenarios. Um, and so your job as a participant is really to apply all the information that you're learning onto that scenario. And so at the end, we also do provide like feedback as far as like, you know, um, was this helpful? Was it not helpful? Um, what can we do to improve? And so ultimately everything that you're learning in there, you'll also be able to apply it so that when you leave out of the training, um, if you ever find yourself in a situation where someone needs help, you can actually utilize the same tools, the same knowledge, the same information that you learn in the, in the training and apply it in a real setting. And so just want to reiterate um, this information. Um, it is all evidence-based. Um, and so it's um, evidence-based for professional peer and um, has a lot of self-help uh, resources as well. And so it's a really just a neat uh, training that, in my opinion, I feel we can all definitely utilize and can learn something out of it. Um, so the action plan that I was um, referring to a little earlier is called ALGI. And so the A um, stands for Approach Assess for Risk of Suicide or Harm. Um, and so this really is kind of like the guiding. What you'll notice um, if you ever participate in the training is that we're constantly always assessing the situation. And so when we um, first encounter someone, the first thing is just to assess the situation. You won't necessarily be assessing for risk of suicide or harm, but you will be assessing the situation itself. The other step is listen unjudgmentally. And this is such easier said than done, you know, listening of, uh, takes a, a kind of two, two things occurring at the same time. One, you want to be attentive to the individual. And then on top of that, you also do want to ensure that you are doing some form of verbal communication or body language communication. And then the last thing is that you want to ensure that there is no judgment. 
Um, just because we've learned that when we do have some form of judgment, it can really refer a person from offering help. And so this really teaches you how to listen non-judgmentally. Um, the other one is giving reassurance and information. You know, ideally when we are helping someone, we want to ensure that there's something that we're offering to them, whether it's reassurance, which is what we like to call hope with facts, um, or information, something that an individual can really take um, away from it. And then the other um, part of this um, action plan is E, is really to encourage appropriate professional help. And, you know, this is where a lot of our mental health first aiders kind of really find themselves in is really being able to encourage um, folks to engage in the professional help. We often find that a lot of our communities, they prefer to deal things on their own. And while, you know, that's in a part, you know, that's something that we learned in our communities within our families, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's also nothing wrong with seeking help when needed. And so um, being able to acknowledge, you know what, maybe this is a little too much for me to carry, maybe I do need some help. And being able to acknowledge that and proceed on with that, um, that is something, like I said, I believe in our communities, something we kind of deteriorate from, but we really want to ensure and encourage that as much as possible, especially when we do need it. And then the lastly is um, encourage self-help and other support um, strategy, um, strategies. And so again, um, while it's very important to seek professional help when needed, it's also okay, you know, to do some self-help, um, whether that's through, um, you know, taking mental health breaks is really just doing something that's fun, exciting for you, something that really relaxes you, or some other support strategies. And that can be like self-help books. There's a lot of information, a variety of different mental health um, practices and um, coping strategies that people can utilize. And so that can be something, um, a part of the um, support strategy kind of plan. And so again, this action plan really kind of guides a lot of the training itself. And this is really what homes and the skills that a participant would take away from the training. And so why mental health first aid? And um, there's a lot of reasons why. Um, one of them um, that I can think of firsthand is mental health problems are very common. You know, um, whether we talked about them or not, that's a whole different story, but they are very common. It's been statistically known that one in five individuals will experience some form of mental health problem in their life. And so learning how to notice um, when someone help and when someone needs help is very key. Um, to be able to provide the help, you know, prior to it becoming a more severe a mental health issue. Um, the other one is stigma associated with mental health conditions, mental health problems, just in general mental health, it's huge. Uh, we often hear, you know, um, the whole phrase, you know, of um, mental, if someone is showing some form of, of mental health distress that they're weak, um, which is something that's not true. Um, we often also hear that, you know, we don't wanna be labeled with a mental health condition, um, avoidance of seeking professional help just because we don't wanna be associated um, with, with, um, with um, psychology or counseling. And so really working on tearing down on stigma is, um, you know, such a, a huge thing within our communities that we, everyone should kind of embark on this. And so the more we understand what is mental health, what are some of those conditions, what does it look like, what are some of the treatments for it, um, and how can we also prevent some of these conditions, um, I think that's our first step to really reducing some of that stigma. Um, and then also another reason to why mental health first aid is Professional help is not always on hand. As much as you know, uh, professional help is needed, we <laughs> realize that they're not always there when we want them to be there, or they're not there when um, someone is experiencing, like say, for example, um, a panic attack. And so normally the people that are around are friends, families, um, community members. And so the more equipped we are, the better we are to really support one another and really engage the entire community to, to be on the lookout and really support one another when we are in need. Um, the other reason why mental health first aid is individuals with mental health problems often don't seek help. Um, and this is such a, a huge one and you know such a huge um, burden on the individuals that 
are living with mental health conditions that they don't always necessarily know that they have a mental health problem. And if some of them do, they often don't want, again, because of stigma, they don't want to be associated with, um, with treatment. Um, and so, again, just ensuring that we, we do get people in um, to get the appropriate professional help. And that way, you know, individuals don't have to deal um, with a mental health problem um, longer times than needed. And so, again, just really connecting people to get the help when, when they're in need of it and when they um, will benefit from the most. Um, it's often suggested that the sooner we can identify a mental health problem and get them into the appropriate health, the less time that they have to deal with that burden. And so, such a um, such a big reason like why mental health first aid is very much needed. And then lastly is um, many people are not well informed and don't know how to respond. Um, and you know, this is such a big one. Oftentimes when I engage in conversations with folks about mental health, one of the things that's uh, often shared with me is, you know, how do you respond when someone tells you um, that they're depressed? or that they're experiencing a lot of anxiety issues or that they might be experiencing um, um, suicidal thoughts. And so always that fear of how do I respond or I don't know how to, um, this training will um, teach you how to intervene and also might help you save a life. Um, we do know that a lot of mental health um, conditions um, can lead to someone uh, feeling um, not feeling, but having thoughts of suicide. And so, um, you know, that's the last thing that we want is for someone to take their own life. And so if there's ways that we can do to prevent it, like why not be that help? Um, why not become a mental health first aider? And so again, four reasons to become a mental health um, first aider. One, be prepared, just like you learn CPR, you learn how to help someone in a mental, um, that's experiencing a mental health problem, um, experiencing substance use. Um, number two, again, I mentioned a little earlier, but just reiterate the thought again, um, mental illnesses are common. One in five people will experience um, a mental health condition in a given year. And three, um, show your care, be there for a family a member, a friend or a colleague, you know, initiating these conversations, just talking about mental health. And it doesn't have to be so deep. It's just really asking someone, how are you feeling today? How has your day been today? Um, small little things like that or something um, else, you know, what have you done to kind of uh, release the stress or are you taking a mental health break? Um, these are small little ways to really engage in the conversation and really normalize talking about mental health. Um, the other thing is you can um, get help. People with mental illness often suffer alone. Again, so learning when, how to step in and offer that support for someone. And so who are our mental health aiders? Um, you know, so it's a variety of folks. They can be teachers, they can be supervisors, they can be first responders, caretakers, co-workers, journalists, parents, friends, siblings. I myself, I work on, the, um, as I mentioned, I work, uh, I work on a college campus. Um, so I'm someone that took mental health first aid originally as, as someone just very much like you all, if you ever decided to take mental health first aid, then I decided to take it a step further and become an instructor of mental health first aid so that I can train, you know, future mental health first aiders. And so it was very awesome um, back um, when our first lady, Michelle Obama, got trained and became also a mental health first aider. And so this is just a little statement that she provided for us. Um, and she said that it really gives you the skills you need to identify it and ultimately help someone in need. And so, again, this is exactly what mental health first aid is all about, really just providing the help to someone that's in need of it. And the only way you'll be able to provide the help to someone is if you're able to identify that, they're, um, that they need the help. And so mental health first aid um, testimonials along with um, our, our first lady, Michelle Obama, these are other testimonials from common folks just around the world um, this first one comes from um, 
a United States Army veteran. So many people are out there wishing for something better, hoping that people will show up. That's what mental health first aid is. It is to help get people connected to care and ultimately get them to a better place. Another one by Officer Orlando Singleton, mental health first aid training has taught the um, has taught the officer to ask his um, charges what happened instead of what's wrong with you. Um, and here's another one. This is um, a school-based mental health counselor. As adults, we sometimes forget how hard it was being an adolescent. And when we see a kid who is just miserable at school, we might think they chose to be that way or that is just part of adolescence. But in fact, they might be in a mental health crisis, one they certainly did not choose and did not want. When a teacher says, how can I help um, how can I be helpful? That is a powerful question. And so again, um, just different reasons um, and testimonials um, of why mental health first aid is such um, such a, a, a big instrument and a big help to our, not only within our household, but also our community. And so just providing a little bit of facts, um, more than 2.5 million people across the United States have been trained in mental health first aid. Apart from that, we have also trained over 15,000 first um, aiders, most of whom work in schools. And then um, I did want to share how do you actually find a course if you are interested. Um, so I'll show you the website, what it looks like and where to go. Um, but you can also email hello at mentalhealthfirstaid.org to schedule like a special training, especially for folks who are part of an organization, a company, a school, or have a big group that would like to get everyone trained. Um, just sending that email um, will get it started. So let me pause the presentation right quick. And let me go to the website. So here on the website, you'll, let me share my screen again. Uh, there we go. So when you go onto mentalhealthfirstaid.org, um, this is the homepage. You'll notice at the very top, it has this tab here that says get trained. You click on here, um, click again on get trained. And this um, uh, page up here. And so you can find courses by locations. You can put in the distance and then um, you just type it in and then the courses will populate in itself. And so that's really the way to kind of start locating some of the um, courses that are being offered within your area, your proximity. Um, as I mentioned, I work at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Our courses are offered to any and all um, students as well as um, employees um, at, from Cal State Dominguez Hill. So if you happen to be part of, a, you know, part of CSUDH, this is such a, you know, something that's available to you and is completely free. Um, so other facts just to also um, be aware of is a little bit of the history. So where did mental health first aid really come out from? Uh, where it is started and so it originated in Australia and since then has expanded over to 23 countries and so back in 2001 Betty Kirchner a nurse specializing in health education and Anthony Drum a mental health literacy professor started really looking at how there wasn't anything created um, to really help out someone that was experiencing like a mental health crisis and so the more they kind of observed and noticed, um, they realized that, you know, we didn't have anything. And so they took it upon themselves and developed um, mental health first aid. And so they really geared it towards where it resembles a lot to CPR. That's why um, there's a lot of comparison as uh, when I was talking the beginning to CPR, because essentially is that what it is, is that first aid um, prior to professional help arriving. And so there are several programs that have emerged since it originally started. And so there um, are youth programs, there's the workplace program, there's also the teens, the adults, the adult is the one that I am trained in. There's also a program specializing for older adults, a veterans program, as well as a fire and emergency um, safety um, training, a public safety, um, training as well, higher education. This is another training that I'm also, um, another program that I'm also trained in. 
And then we have for rural community schools and faith and spiritual communities. So from where it started to where we are now, like it's really been expanding and it will continue expanding. This is just a set of, of trainings that are, are developed and are available for folks that might find themselves within this realm of populations. And so again, just really hounding into uh, mental health first aid is evidence-based. Um, it increases knowledge and understanding. It encourages people helping people. Um, it supports people getting the help, decreases social distance, um, and increases mental wellness. Sorry. Um, it's also included in um, SAMHSA's National Registry of Evidence-Based um, Programs and Practices. And so um, for people that want to just look more into like, where is that data that's really backing up this program, you can go on here and kind of start looking at some of that evidential support. There's a lot of studies that have been done to really look at, you know, you know, is this program doing really what it's meant to do? And um, so there's been a lot of support backing it up that it does. It's really um, helpful. Um, can change a lot of people's lives. I know as an instructor, um, I've been providing this training for approximately maybe five years now. And I can just share from what people have shared with me is like they really gained a lot from it. Um, people feel a lot more ready to engage in those conversations, um, ready to really have some of those um, intervene in situations where if, if they happen to come across something that they feel more comfortable really intervening. Um, and so um, again, if this is something you're interested, you know, you can make a difference and really it starts by you. Um, one, having an open mind about um, registering for this training and then two, just finding a course. And so something I didn't share was exactly the length of the course. And so I want you to just know firsthand that it does take about 7.5 hours to complete the course. Really the way that they're done is either in one sitting. So a lot of the training courses are done just in, in, in one time. So, you know, you got to ensure that whatever date you're selecting, you have the, um, the entire capacity to be there for 7.5 hours of it, or it can be broken down into two days. So the training will be broken down into um, approximately what, 3.5 hours um, each day. And so as soon as you're completed with those two days, then you complete the training. Um, personally, as an instructor, I prefer the two days um, just because there is a lot of content and it's sometimes difficult to sit in one sitting, but you know, it's really up to you and your preference um, with both, both either in one day or separating them two, you'll get a lot and a lot of benefit from it. So I highly encourage you all to really um, just take a look at it, um, you know, don't just take my word for it, explore the, um, the website, look into mental health first aid, um, mental health first aid .org. Look, um, look at the website, look at what they have to offer. Um, if you know of anyone um, that has taken the training um, before, ask them, see why they took it. Um, sometimes hearing from other folks, of, you know, why they decided to um, step into this role of being a mental health first aider might encourage other folks to, um, to also um, make that step, to really hear from them. And if you all have any questions, always feel free to, um, you know, contact me. You can reach me at um, jlara at csudh.edu. Once again, it's jlara at csudh.edu. And then um, if you prefer to, you know, have a phone conversation, um, I'm also available for that. And so the best phone number to reach me will be at 310-243-3621. So again, 310-243-3621. And so um, other than that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining me today and just learn a little bit more about um, mental health first aid.